Today we take Closure Turtle out for a spin. Ilanga Sharan is a data scientist at Google, a human language expert and the author of Closure Turtle. I had the opportunity to ask him why he wrote Closure Turtle. Soon after that, so I got involved with Closure Bridge as well, um, helping to edit some of the early curriculum and, and teach one of the earliest workshops. Um, uh, I guess introducing other languages besides English into technology or vice versa, introducing technology into other languages. Um, and for those efforts to be successful, you have to, I feel like you, you really have to look at say like the next generation. So for that, I thought, okay, well, what, what would actually help them understand programming in, in a different language? And that, that would be, you would have to go through, I think logo. And I'm, and I'm basing that just from my own personal experience. So when I learned uh, programming, I learned basic first and it was just terrible, terrible experience. Like, you know, beyond just the, like the, the, the primitives, like I you know, didn't really learn a whole lot. And then I took uh, a logo class when I was in middle school and I thought, nah, well, I'll just, you know, do it for fun, but didn't think of it as anything serious. And it was just so engaging because um, it was just so simple and it was so easy. Um, so I didn't, you know, I, I thought that I would maybe work on this as sort of like a, I, I would like to do was on the wish list. And then, um, during the closure West work, uh, conference, uh, there was a, an hour where like, um, the closure, like people from closure bridge had a report and they talked about where students ran up against, ran up against problems and where they had, um, you know, they enjoy the workshop up to a certain point. And that point was functions and at functions that's where they just had a lot of difficulties especially when they started introducing high order functions it's like oh we've got functions now we've got functions that can take functions mm. and it's like whoa poof, <laughs> right and it's like higher order functions so and then of course what you know what are the first two higher order functions that you would think of map and reduce um but then i thought wait hold on like logos got repeat that's a higher order function and logo's a lisp and closure's a lisp. So kind of putting it all together, I was just like, oh yeah, you know, take that idea of implementing logo in closure as a tool for teaching kids and it should be a tool for teaching closure in general. There's something about repeat that you can just understand intuitively. Um, I'll just go on a limb, go out on a limb and, and say that. Like the word itself is something that you just understand from like it, you're more likely to understand what repeat means from just your knowledge of language repeat repeat that okay yeah I, I get what that means whereas map like what does map really mean like you know is it a is it a map of the world no not that kind of map you know so what you know, it's, it's, it's sort of a strange name until you learn it and then it does it's not strange at all reduce like are we talking about recent you know you know what I mean Hmm. So I think there's a, there's a part of that and it's one of the, obviously what's one of the functions in logo and there aren't that many, but a lot of them, a lot of the functions in logo just have natural analogs to what we perceive in the real world. Hmm. I, I think the same things that we as developers enjoy and, and have pleasure in, uh, take pleasure in, which is, um, you know, an interactive environment where you see the results quickly of, of changes that you make. Um, being able to see that connection, I think, also matters for when you're learning. Um, I think simplicity really matters as well. Mm. Uh, you know, when, when you learn Java for the first time, it's like, okay, we're going to do Java. We're going to put our code into this function. It's going to be the signature. Let's not talk about what a signature is. We're just going to say public static void main, string args, open curly brace, look close curly brace. Okay, now you're okay. Oh, wait, 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 but you want to print something to this console. Okay, system.out, that print line. Okay, don't worry about the system.out. You know, it's just like, there's so much boilerplate. Um, and it's just like, what? You know, what is going on? And then you have to compile, then you have to run. And it's just like, it's sort of an extreme example to contrast with like logo. You just type some stuff at this command prompt, quote unquote, you know, the REPL effectively. And boom, you see something. And, and I think, Part of it is like it's interactive, but I think part of it is that it's visual. Mm -hmm. There is something about this being visual that I think just appeals to people more than just the console, like point, you know, creating a guest 
in game in a, in a console, like guess the number, it, you know, that's great and all, but you know, seeing a picture is like, oh, that's really cool. It's a star. Absolutely, um, yeah. That and, is true even today. We still teach kids programming at a very, very early age through Logo or some version of it like Scratch or Blockly, you know, a GUI version of Logo. And, you know, Logo, when it was first implemented, was, was implemented as a list for decades and decades up, up until Scratch have all been lists in a sense. And so therefore, their macros in the language. And, you know, if the students had realized or if the teachers had known that there are these things called macros, I mean, like the power that's contained within that language is just there, just, just completely unbeknownst to all people involved in, the, in that classroom setting. We, we teach, we're effectively teaching list to kids. Then somewhere in between, uh, you know, being a kid who knows list and enjoying it and being like a list, uh, like a gray beard list wizard, there's this like programming in between for like the, the rest of us. And it's like, I don't, I don't see that. Why, why would we think that you have to be a wizard to know list for all its magical powers? That's, that's what I think. It's like, well, now you got macros. You don't have to worry about someone recompiling every single language you care about. Well, if you're, the language you care about is closure, <laughs> you know? And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think closure should be the language that people should be learning programming because that's where logo can be implemented in. And so it's like, why not just start people on the right foot, you know, taking an hmm. opinionated view of the world, but, you know, why not? And it's almost... Like we make it so much more accessible and we make like lang like human language wise, we make programming more accessible through logo and it's just like a no brainer almost. It's like, right. you're right for, for a logo, the logo commands lend themselves to translate very well. Ah. Um, yeah, yeah. So that, that was, that was a breeze that had very, yeah, there were no problems there and that was easy. Oh, cool. If you are learning or teaching closure, Closure Bridge has an excellent curriculum online. It contains setup instructions, slides, and exercises. The slides provide an introduction and overview of closure syntax and concepts. One of the exercises is Turtles Walk. Okay, let's put this turtle through its paces. The forward function advances the turtle triangle, leaving a path behind it. Left and right are functions that point to the turtle triangle in new direction. To move the turtle back to where it started, use the home function. Clean clears any previous paths. Instructions can be grouped together using the all form. Grouping instructions together in an all form does not execute the instructions. We can execute a group of instructions using the repeat function. Repeat takes a number and a group. It performs the instructions in the group that many times. We combine a forward instruction with a right instruction and repeat the combination many times. We can give the grouping a new name using def. An all grouping is actually a function that we can execute just like left and right. Invoking the function moves the turtle triangle. Let's make an octagon. We need to move forward and turn 45 degrees eight times to get back to where we started. Let's name that function octagon. Now let's repeat octagon at different angles. It makes an interesting pattern. What about if we make an octagon of patterns? That looks pretty cool. Combining functions and giving them names can take us a long way. There are other built-in functions we can call like color. Color takes a collection of values representing red, green, and blue. If we were building a web page and wanted to allow the user to take some action by clicking a button, we would define the actions in exactly the same way. Let's add the functions we define to the collection of buttons shown on this page. When I click the button, it executes the function we defined. The total vocabulary deals with moving a turtle. A web page vocabulary deals with describing text, images, and links to other pages. This entire page was created using functions and data. 
Let's observe how the program developed over time. Notice the familiar pattern. In some sense, it seems like programming is functions all the way down. Functions on functions on functions. But there is computer hardware at the bottom. Richard Feynman describes a computer as the most advanced filing system ever created. It is an incredibly apt description. Computers look up information, make calculations, and record information. Our program is built on top of this mechanism. We define functions. The program itself is data that the computer reads and executes. Alan Kay describes this duality as Maxwell's equations of computer science. The evaluation of forms and the application of functions. It is worth taking some time to ponder these intertwined, similar, yet different functions. What is different about evaluating what a form means and applying that meaning? How would you go about writing a program to evaluate forms? Expressing a function is a subtly different thing from expressing the application of a function. Programs are all about expression. We can express how a turtle should draw complex shapes with functions. The turtle language is mysteriously expressive. The same means of expression extend to rendering a web page and pretty much anything you would want a computer to do. Until next time, keep coding. Thank you.